Hey, Shakers, and welcome to Worth Your Salt, the podcast that shakes up your marketing game in the health and wellness industry. Worth Your Salt is brought to you every Thursday by Salt Marketing. Salt Marketing helps health and wellness practitioners build trust and authority to attract a steady stream of inbound wellness seekers. For more information, you can visit us online at saltmarketing.co. I'm Jennifer Oroqua, Story Brand Certified Guide, Marketing Strategist with Salt Marketing, and your host for today's episode of Worth Your Salt. Now today, Worth Your Salt is heading back to school to learn what health and wellness students are being taught about how to market and grow their practices. Now, if you're years out of school, you might be thinking you already know the best ways to attract new clients. But to stay current and compete at a level that this profession demands, adopting a mindset of continuous learning can be the difference between just surviving and thriving. My guest today is a professor at Life University, a leading chiropractic and holistic health university located just outside of Atlanta. Life University offers associate, bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees, which include a rigorous curriculum that teaches not only the skills needed to practice, but the skills needed to succeed. Ronald Ware inspires his students with tools for entrepreneurship and marketing. Ronald, I am so grateful you took time out of your busy schedule to share your insight with me today. Thank you so much for joining me on Worth Your Salt. Well, Jennifer, and thanks for having me. Greatly appreciate the opportunity to share my knowledge. Yeah, of course. So first, tell me a little bit about you. You clearly have an entrepreneurial spirit and the desire to lead and share that spirit with others. How did you come to Life University? I came to Life University. My wife, Dr. Mamie Ware, has been there since 74 with a short break, about 13 to 12 years there. But she was there before no undergrad school. Mm. So when I met her in 95, got married in 97, I owned a marble and granite company, did that for about 10 years, sold it, Went and got my master's degree and life needed a business professor. Went in and got the job 2008. That's how I got to life. (laughs) And ever since then, I've been tweaking the entire business forum to be more in line with what DC students need. That's the doctor of chiropractic program. Mm -hmm. And also what the undergrad students need, which is a traditional uh, business of of administration undergrad degree. That's how I got the life. Mm -hmm. I would like to say the rest is history, but I can't because there's a whole lot more. (laughs) All right. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening in universities right now to prepare students for the road ahead. Can you share some of the insights into the latest trends and approaches in marketing education that health and wellness students are exposed to in universities today? How has this evolved over the last few years? In regard to the health and wellness, a lot of what these students are getting is outside the university currently. Because you have to keep in mind, when you want to become a doctor, a chiropractor, a lawyer, that's what the school is preparing you for. The school's not preparing you to be an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. even though that's the avenue that you may find yourself going into. So what we do at Life is that we build a foundation of business principles that's embedded in the curriculum. So they have a really good marketing foundation, entrepreneurial foundation to where they can go and learn more outside of Life because our number one objective here, again, is to make sure that they're able to pass their national boards to become that chiropractor. So, you know, a lot of these kids that come into the program may not have have had any business courses, marketing courses whatsoever. Mm -hmm. My goal, the school's goal, is to build a foundation which they could build upon once they leave the school. And that's what you see in today's industry is giving them just enough to get started and also to be to be competent in doing so. Mm-hmm. Well, and I know, you know, the latest technologies and platforms really can impact the marketing strategy. So, so how are universities preparing chiropractic students to utilize emerging technologies effectively in, in their future practices? Good old social media. <laughs> I do touch on that. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok now and Twitter now X. Mm-hmm. I do touch on that and, and how younger generations look to the technology side when it comes to an intro into who you are, what your business has to offer. And that's a way to connect with these generations that will give your career sustainability, let's call it. And that's just the first step. You know, you will always end up with the face to face, but with technology, it opens up that door when you have what's called the call to action Mm -hmm. within your social media campaigns to get them to click and go through that door to find out more about you. Mm -hmm. Well, and with your long history of life, yeah, I'm curious about you know, how the the changing digital landscape, you know, how do you address the balance between teaching foundational marketing principles 
and adapting to those new online techniques, talking about Instagram and your call to action and all those sorts of things. There's got to be some foundation there to reinforce what you're teaching. Oh, absolutely. It's it's from a historical standpoint. We start with the, the traditional face-to-face marketing, per se, the basic concepts, the four Ps, this, that, and the other. We roll it into the social media space, making sure that the kids understand that whatever you are saying or presenting on paper has to be the same in the digital world. You have to have that same blueprint so that there's no confusion in your messages once they're being delivered. Whatever you say on the traditional side, you also have to say on the digital side so that your potential customer isn't confused. Mm -hmm. Consistency consistency. Mm-hmm. That's what we're selling yeah. here. I want the students to understand anybody can go anywhere and get an adjustment, but it's the, it's the consistency of the delivery of that experience that brings people back. Smart. For sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm fascinated by this idea of, of marrying the traditional with the, the digital. Um, I'm sure we're all feeling a little bit behind the curve at this point. I do have to take a sponsorship break, but when we return, I want to talk about how we can all get re-inspired by what students are learning today. Stay with us. The Worth Your Salt podcast is grateful to our partners and sponsors. Social media can be such an undertaking for your practice. Having to dream up new content over and over again, then create visuals and repurpose it across multiple platforms, and yet not see the follower growth you are looking for? It's enough to make you pull out a typewriter and start faxing people. But at Salt Marketing, we can help you get over that hurdle. Our content playbook with social media action plan starts with a brand review to make sure it is represented consistently across all platforms. Then we provide a full content analysis for each of your channels, helping you identify your optimal content pillars. Your hashtag sets are next, grouped into themes specific to your niche. Your social media action plan also includes competitive intelligence and recommendations to make the most of your bio. Finally, we'll provide you with your action plan, identifying what's working and what you can improve upon. Get started today. Visit us at saltmarketing.co slash services to learn more. That's saltmarketing.co slash services. Take the stress out of social media with your custom action plan and playbook from Salt Marketing. I'm back here on the Worth Your Salt podcast with Ronald Ware, marketing professor at Life University. And so, Ronald, chiropractors and other wellness practitioners who have been practicing for years might feel a little disconnected from the evolving marketing landscape. How can they tap into that enthusiasm and fresh perspectives that marketing students are, you know, they're getting reinvigorated in their own approach? The same way that I have, and that's with my 23-year-old daughter. If you have a grandchild that's in social media, does social media, that's one place to start. And of course, that can strengthen the bond between parent, child, grandparent, child. And of course, another way is finding a local organization that is offering classes on how to be engaging in social media and plus YouTube. There's a ton of stuff on YouTube that can help those that are consider themselves behind the curve. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, once you dip your toe in the water, per se, it's got you. You'll be there being creative, mm-hmm. exploring, and it opens up a vast world of opportunity and knowledge for you to decipher what you want and what you don't want. So just seek out those that are already in there. And of course, that's the younger crowd. And mm-hmm. there's plenty of, of, I'm going to call them social groups that would be more than happy to assist with your um, new venture in the social media space. And I know Oftentimes, students will bring innovative ideas to the table, things we wouldn't, wouldn't have thought of. We won't think outside of the box the same way they do. Can you share any examples of creative marketing concepts or strategies that your students have developed, which might reshape how established practitioners approach these marketing efforts? That's a tough question. <laughs> Most of the kids that come through our DC program have never had any business marketing background whatsoever. And so they're like Mm. almost like a deer in headlights when it comes to the marketing piece. Mm. But once they get started, it always comes back to making yourself available either digitally or or, or face to face. Like one kid said the other day, he says, I send out a email to all of my clients once a week 
no matter what, discussing various topics. He said they may not even open it, Hmm. but what they see is my name in an email. What that does, that embeds or implants my name Mm -hmm. in their mind towards the top of their thinking because they see it over and over and over, which any marketer Mm -hmm. knows the more impressions you get, the higher the ranking is in someone's mind when it comes to, hey, so-and-so offers X service. Ah, yes, I go over here to Dr. Tim. What the kids do, which is really, really innovative, they they will work together Hmm. on marketing schemes. I think that is just brilliant because Mm -hmm. you're lowering your guard as to say, I don't know all of this, but maybe me and four others together Mm -hmm. can make this happen. So when you ask him innovation, it's the willingness of the kid to realize that this is a weakness within a SWOT analysis, but that weakness can turn into a strength, which leads to an opportunity. Yeah, that's definitely something we could all learn from to collaborate with others that might have a a strength that we are actually weak in. That makes perfect sense. Absolutely. So considering the, the generation gap in consumer behavior these days. What insights from the younger generation's learning can we leverage to connect more effectively with the diverse patient base that people are seeing these days? Text, text, and more texting. (laughs) Interesting. These kids don't read emails. Trust me. Yeah. There are several different texting apps out there that you download to your phone and designate Mm -hmm. that just for your patients, your clients, or whatever. And people are more readily to look at a text because it's instant than they are to open up an email. Mm -hmm. So texting, texting, texting. Yeah, for sure. All right. Great advice. It's time for another quick break. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to the Worth Your Salt podcast. And today I'm talking with Ronald Ware, marketing professor at Life University. Ronald has been inspiring students on their entrepreneurial journey since 2008. We'd love to hear your thoughts. So be sure to join us over on Instagram, LinkedIn, or Facebook, and let us know how you're staying current on what today's students are learning. So, Ronald, how can those of us who are long out of school, and let's face it, that's probably most of us, how can we sharpen our marketing skills? What workshops, online courses, or seminars would you recommend to help us gain a solid understanding of current trends and strategies? Look at your local college. I'm sure they offer a certificate program where you can be face-to-face and go in and over a semester, which is 16 weeks, get a certificate in social media. Um, There's plenty of opportunities to learn online that will teach you how to become more tech savvy for today's world. For sure. And I know like when I think about my generation, Generation X, we're really good um, investigators online. We we will Google it no matter what. So I want to go back to something that you said earlier. You were talking about how um, the students will often collaborate outside the classroom um, to come up with fresh ideas and new approaches. And that that sort of made me want to ask you about networking, because obviously networking can play a significant role in marketing our businesses and and our success. So I was wondering if you had any advice for those who might no longer be in an academic environment to connect with current marketing students or how do they connect with professionals to exchange ideas and insights? Social clubs that you can connect with. And the social club doesn't have to have the word marketing in it. But the people that are associated with this social event, social club may know somebody that is really great in marketing. Bottom line is this, get up, go out and meet and greet people. Mm -hmm. Get out there, shake a hand, say hello, let people know what you're doing. And you never know who in that crowd Mm -hmm. might be able to help you. That's what's key. That's that's networking. For sure. Well, and that's what I always say, that marketing is no field of dreams. You can you can build it and they still won't come. You've got to tell them where it is and give them directions and all that good stuff. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Oh, so right. It's well, well said. Well said. Yep. Yep. Um, Okay. So last question. If our listeners want to know more about you, about Life University, where can they go? Uh, Life.edu is where they can go to um, learn more about the school. For me personally, there's a web page in there. You just go to the faculty site, click on faculty. You should see me there with a, with a little bio. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I own Confessions Coffee Africa, where we sell premium coffee in Ghana. And I'm also the co-founder and CEO of the Chiropractic Golf Association, which is less than six months old. We had our first golf tournament. Uh, about two or three weeks ago, which was a great success. And Jennifer, I have about 50 to 60 alumni that I mentor. Yeah. But if you really want to get to know me, just you know, send me an email at ronald.ware at life.edu. I'll be more than happy to answer it. The one goal 
that I've always had was to give back at no cost. Nice. And you've definitely done that. And I want to let everybody know that, of course, uh, links to everything that Ronald mentioned and to his LinkedIn profile will all be available on our website at saltmarketing.co. But right now it is time for our lightning round questions. And these are a few quick questions that I ask of every guest. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. First question is, what is the best book you've read recently? The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John C. Maxwell. That is a good one. All right. Next question. What is your favorite thing about the work that you do? Giving back the knowledge of my trials and tribulations and my um, failures, which lead to success. Mm -hmm. Next question is, what is the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? Oh, don't quit. Don't quit. When you fall down, you just get back up, learn from it, jot it down and move forward. Always move forward and always be positive minded. Surround yourself with positive people. Simple but powerful philosophy. All right. Last question. Who or what inspires you? Life. Life itself inspires me because it's easy to be negative in today's world. I choose to be that beacon of light. This has been such a great conversation, Ronald. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's episode of Worth Your Salt. Thank you very much for having me. I, am, I have enjoyed myself. And Jennifer, you're more than welcome to come lecture in my class anytime you like. <laughs> That would be that would be fun. <laughs> that would be great. I also want to thank our listeners and let you know that if you're ready for your Worth Your Salt debut, tell us about your expertise by emailing us at grow at saltmarketing.co. Be sure to subscribe on our website so you never miss an episode. Finally, leave us a review or give the show a handful of stars wherever you get your content. That's all for this episode of Worth Your Salt. Be sure to join me again next Thursday. In the meantime, let's get out there and shake things up. That's all for this episode of Worth Your Salt. Be sure to join... Uh, <laughs> I hate myself. My editor likes to make outtakes of all of my, my bloopers, so I'm just oh, nice. entertaining him oh, at this nice. point. Here we go.